Guests, newly introduced by members, be welcome to our renewed society. The Mitre Tavern in Fleet Street is the place wherein you see displayed our hat and mace. The date is sometime in the year of grace 1719. My name is the Lee, the Norway King of Arms, as you must believe, a very herald through the past and beckon since England's crown was held by James II. As president, it's I who take the chair. Who else we have? Gentlemen, declare. I, William Stukeley, Secretarius, am much concerned with things of curious inquiry. Many of my friends aver that I am a natural philosopher. Romance, religion, and the recondite furnish me with matters for delight. Antiquity contains great wisdom in its dark chapters, and tis I who write the minutes. And I, treasurer and Samuel Gale, lover of antiquities and ale, with learned Dr. Stukeley for my guide, we went our way through Wiltshire's countryside to view those mighty stones, a wondrous show that Britons wrought long centuries ago. Whether by native heft or Roman hand, the secretary alone may understand. Sufficient have we said by way of meeting. Now, gentlemen, commence our usual meeting. A number of guests, newly introduced by members, beg leave to attend your meeting. Is it your pleasure that I welcome them in your name? The business of the last meeting. Mr. Fitzpatrick was by ballot elected member. By order and consent of the society, the treasurer is to subscribe to Mr. Strikes' new edition of the Stone Survey of London for the use of the society. It was agreed by ballot. Is it your pleasure that I sign these minutes as a true and accurate record of our meeting? We come now to the more agreeable business of this meeting. Mr. Gale will present on this our first acquisition, John Stowe's Survey of London, in the hope that from this day forth we may pro propagate a library for our members. Mr. President, members and guests, upon the brevity of my discourse, the satisfaction may be achieved in the time it takes to enjoy a quart of ale, a, a pinch of tobacco, a, a, a plate of pickled herring, but alas, not in the time allowed for my perambulation. Were I to pour upon these volumes too much, I would bore you and make you unfit for a pleasant evening. I must therefore soar and veer over this vast terrain and use sparingly, making you fitter for merry company. How many minutes, Mr. Secretary? Ten minutes for the matter, Mr. Gale. Ten minutes. John Stirk, author of this account, was born in 1525 in London, son and grandson of Tallow Chandlers and family connected with the parish of St. Michael Cornhill, admitted by merit of proposed that our King George build the new Bank of England. Stowe was of the upper of the middle state, or what might be called the upper station of low life. Uh, yeah, I found no record of his education, although he is Latin and scholarly equipment of excellence. Stowe's method and stricture provided therein the first history of London. In his day, the city was a cramped and primitive town, given to disease and drunkenness and a riotous assembly. <laughs> just like the South of the River is today. And yet, from our city's teeming alleys and swarming streets yielded forth Shakespeare, Raleigh, Sidney, and Bacon, and London rose to become the most flourishing city in the realm. May I not say in Europe? Indeed, Mr. Secretary. In the world. <coughs> yes, proceed. In the section headed 
city divided into parts. Half the text of the survey is a significant amount, given the walls, water supplies, and bridges, gates, defences, schools, courts, laws, and parish records, extensive parish registers. You, sir, are a scholar, and you, you live in these enlightened times, you will appreciate that anyone chasing their ancestry must, of necessity, go to parish records, must we not? If we have not records, what do we have? The Dark Ages, do we not? If I may. Thankfully, Mr. Stowe provided a census of 150 parish churches and their records, of which a mere dozen survived the fire some 50 years ago. Of course, a great many of our guests, and indeed most of our members, will be old enough to remember the great fire of 1666. Hey, you, sir, I see you have age and aspect enough. Do you want to think of some pretty sights? <laughs>
some writing or some men in, uh, causes them in some masses to forget themselves. This section I have to come. And I have to be with the members and honored guests. I hope I got you so surveyed so that you favorable acceptance. I should keep no longer for your cordial. And uh, uh, I thank you for your kind attention. We return our thanks to Mr. Gale for his preface. The compendium of material gathered by Mr. Stowe <laughs> and the encouragement he provides to those of us who follow in his footsteps, we would do well to carry forth as our guide. I commend this, our first acquisition for the society. <laughs> now, let Father Time shake his glass and let us disperse for our pleasure. The meeting stands adjourned.